In the case study exam, again, it's not just about knowing the information. It's not just about being able to demonstrate to the examiner that you have the knowledge for passing the exam. There are a lot of other things that are required at the case study level to get that pass. And we're going to look at those now. The first thing is writing and communication skills. In the objective tests, you were just clicking answer A, answer B, etc. on an objective test multiple choice question. That is no longer the case. In the case study, you need to have excellent writing skills. I'll give you an example of a student. We've taught many students over the years and there's plenty of students who are like this. They know the syllabus really well. They're excellent. But when they write their answers, they lack application to the scenario. They didn't think about applying it to the scenario. They didn't analyze their points well enough. They just regurgitate the theory as if they were answering an objective test question. And that's not the case here in the case study exam. And this student kept failing the exam, despite the fact that they knew the content so well. They just didn't apply the material and they didn't analyze the material. So application and analysis, two key takeaways here. Make sure when you are writing the exam that you have an excellent writing style, you explain your points fully and don't be like this student here. And I'm calling her the 20% student because she was scoring less than 20% in her exams despite knowing the material. So what that means here is that knowing the material alone might only get you up to 20% of the marks needed. But of course, you need 60% of the marks. So this is where the additional 40% comes in by writing effectively, analyzing your points and follow the set writing rules that we provide you. And if you don't know what these are yet, that's perfectly understandable, but we will be coming on to those later in this tuition video series. And it's really important that you follow those rules in order to maximize the marks that you will get in the exam. You must produce a complete and balanced script. And incomplete scripts are likely to fail. And what I mean by a balanced and complete script is you've attempted every single question. And you'd be amazed at the amount of students who do not complete their script. What they do is they spend all their time answering the first subsection and they don't spend enough time answering the second subsection. And remember, each of the questions you get, and you'll get four questions in this exam, will have two or maybe even three subsections. And the subsections will often be from different parts of the syllabus. So some will be of core activity A, some will be of core activity B, etc. And what is also important to consider here is that when you are sitting this exam and you have two subsections, each subsection will be worth a certain percentage of the marks for that question. And no matter how good, how in depth your answer is to the first subsection, you will only get half the marks or 60% of the marks, whatever percentage is given by SEMA for that particular subsection. So no matter how excellent your answer is, you won't meet the total mark. So for example, if you got two subsections, each is worth 12 marks in the exam, and you are looking to get a certain percentage of 24 marks for this question. Now you could do really, really well in the first subsection, Perhaps you got 75% of the marks available. You had 12 to get and you got nine. That's a really good attempt. You're on track for a pass. But then if you had no time to answer the second subtask and you only got three marks, then you're suddenly on track for a fail because you only got 12 out of 24 marks. That's 50%. You're well behind the pass mark now. And even if you wrote a brilliant answer, for the first subsection, you'll only get 12 marks. It won't give you more marks for subtask one, even if it is far beyond what is expected. 
So make sure you always attempt each subtask and that's where time management comes in. And also there's no going back. Once you get to the end of the time you have available, the 45 minutes, it will automatically close and move you on. You can't carry that time forward and you can't come back to that question later. And therefore it's vital that you work on your time management and answer every single subsection you are given. Make sure you know the pre-scene and have in-depth knowledge of both the pre-scene and the industry. So imagine that you are asked to write a report. You're at work and you've been asked to write a report to the board of directors at your workplace. Now they will expect you to write a decent report full of logic, full of practicality, full of reference to the organization that you work. They won't expect you to write one that doesn't have any reference to the organization that you work in. And that's a mistake students often make. You must analyze the case and do a full strategic analysis before the exam. And what I mean by that is you must look at the syllabus and analyze it within the context of the company you are working for, just as I mentioned in that story about the board of directors. They won't expect you to analyze certain theories, analyze certain strategies in a really hypothetical sense. Or maybe if this company is doing this and doing that, then this strategy might be relevant for them. You're playing the role of an accountant within that organization. You will know that if you are playing that role effectively. You won't be guessing what the operations of this company might be like because you're supposed to be working for them. So apply all the information from the syllabus to the exam based on the pre-scene and also do some industry research. Get a good understanding of the actual industry and also think of some real life examples. If, for example, the company is a company that specializes in pharmaceuticals, then look at the pharmaceutical industry. What issues are actually facing the pharmaceutical industry? Do you have any industry information, any trends, any trend analysis, etc., that supports the points that you are making? Because that will, again, illustrate to the examiner that you have the business acumen, which is what they are looking for in this exam. Thank you.